Hello everyone, welcome to A plus B I. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a nice equation with complex numbers. When it comes to complex numbers, equations are always nice, aren't they? We have z squared plus re of z, which is the real part of z, equals 11 plus 24i. I don't know if you've seen equations like this before, but I kind of try to come up with my own equations most of the time. Sometimes I'll take it from different competitions, math books on the web, or sometimes it'll be suggested by my viewers, and you are more than welcome to suggest videos, ideas, problems, and you can do them in the comment section, or I think the best way to do it is comment section. Just let us know if you have a good problem. Great. So... We have this problem where we have a complex number z. First of all, what is a complex number, right? You may be new to complex numbers. If that's the case, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. If you like algebra, in addition to complex numbers, number theory and trigonometry, maybe a little bit of geometry, check out my other channel, Cyber Math, that is Cyber with an S, okay? And let me know what you think. So, in this problem, we're gonna go ahead and try to find a complex number z, which satisfies this equation. Complex number or numbers. We don't know how many solutions we have, do we? Or do we even have a solution? Because maybe in some cases we have no solutions. Or we, in some cases we have infinitely many solutions. So that's, those are all the questions that we're going to answer at the end of this video. But to solve this first, you need to know what a complex number is, right? So let's briefly talk about it. If you're new to complex numbers, like I said earlier, you can check the lecture videos. But in general, z equals a plus bi is a complex number. a and b are real numbers. And i is the square root of negative 1. I say the square root. Normally, complex numbers have two square roots. But one of them is called the principal square root. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? So, complex numbers are basically two-dimensional, right? Like vectors. They have a direction, uh, they have a starting point, they have an end point, because that's what the complex number is, the end point, and the starting point is the origin. So they kind of look like this when they're plotted. Taking A and B as positive, our complex number is gonna look something like this. This is our Z, this is A units, this is B units. And if you have a negative A or a negative B, then you can go ahead and use other quadrants depending on what you have. But these axes are called the real axis and the imaginary axis. And of course, this number makes an angle, right? When plotted like this, like a vector. And theta is called the argument. And the distance from zero is called the absolute value. Or in some cases, it's called the modulus. And sometimes R is, R is used to denote absolute value. Okay, so that's kind of like a brief introduction to complex numbers. But since we're trying to solve for z here, can we use this as our reference? And my question is, or my answer is, why not? Right? That's more like a question, not an answer. But what is a and b, right? That's the critical part. Because to understand how to solve problems with real part of z, you need to know what the real part is. And the real part is the part... That is real. In other words, with the a plus b i, a would be the real part and b would be the imaginary part. You've got to be careful because the imaginary part is often confused. It does not contain i. It's just a number in front of i. Or you can say the coefficient of i is the imaginary part. So if imaginary part is zero, if b is zero, then we have a real number, which is also a complex number. Complex numbers contain real numbers. And if a is zero and b is not zero, then we have a purely imaginary number. i is imaginary, 2i is imaginary. Okay, makes sense? Now, since we are given in this equation that z squared is added to the real part of z, and since we assume z is a plus b i, we can go ahead and do the following. Replace z with a plus b i, okay, plus real part of z, which is a, wow, that was easy, equals 11 plus 24i. Awesome. So this equation needs to be solved, but how can we solve it? There are two variables, a and b, there, or I should say they're not variables necessarily, but they're kind of like 
unknowns, right? Let's go ahead and square this first. Now, when you square a plus b, it's a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. But when you square a plus bi, it's a little different. It's a squared plus b squared i squared, but guess what? Because i is the square root of negative 1, i squared is equal to negative 1, something that you should ever, never forget. So you get minus b squared instead of plus, and then plus 2abi plus a equals 11 plus 24i. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and put the real parts together. What do I mean by that? I mean a squared minus b squared plus a plus 2abi, and I'm going to use actually a different color for that maybe this one mm, let's see which one is better I, I, nothing goes with yellow by the way anyways i'm going to use the orange and then going back to this i'm going to use this and for the imaginary part i'm going to use orange again okay so hopefully this makes it a little easier like color coding and if you look at this carefully you're going to realize that okay these two things should be equal right and this should be equal to that. That's what it is. It's how two complex numbers are equal to each other. Of course, 3 plus 4i is equal to 3 plus 4i. Makes sense? Okay. Stating the obvious. Now, from here, we get the following. a squared minus b squared plus a equals 11. And 2ab equals 24. That is a system of equations which we need to solve. How do you solve it? Hmm, that's a good question. That's a million dollar question, actually. So we're going to try different things. But here's one thing you can do. There's a couple of things you can do. But I think one of them is first simplify this. That gives you AB equals 12. And then from here, you can isolate either B or A. I'll probably go with B because there's only one occurrence. So how about replacing B with 12 over A? This is something we can substitute here. So now we have a squared minus b squared, which is 144 over a squared. Oops, it's on a pen going crazy after a little static something. I don't know what it is, but sometimes that happens. Anyways, a squared, let me try that, minus b squared, which is 12 over a squared. So I'm going to show my work, maybe that's why, plus a equals 11. So this equation needs to be solved. Can we solve it? Let's give it a try. This will be 144 over a squared. Uh-oh, a cortic is coming up. Scary, right? So now we're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by a squared. a to the fourth minus 144 plus a cubed equals 11a squared. And if you put everything on the same side, a to the fourth power minus or plus a cubed minus 11a squared minus 144 equals 0. Beautiful, not so beautiful, because we have a quartic equation, which is not even depressed. There's a couple of ways to go about it. You know, you can use the quartic formula, which you don't want to use, trust me. It's too complicated. And you can look it up on Wikipedia. You know, uh, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Or maybe use the rational root theorem. Kind of try to guess and check. The rational root theorem tells us that, okay, 144... And I think at this point, I'm thinking maybe this might be helpful. Should we multiply both sides by 16 and then try to... Is that going to make it better? I'm not exactly sure. That might make things worse. But it, by looking at the, you know, divisors of 144, like 1 or 2 or 3 or even 12, you're going to test those values, the rational root theorem, can give you the value of a. That's one way to approach it. Of course, uh, you can also look at this because since we want this to be uh, have integer solutions, 12 is divided by a. So maybe just look at factors of 12 because this also tells you the same thing, right? So a can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Those are possible. Of course, a can be negative 2, but we can just try the positive solutions first. Let's go ahead and quickly test them. If you pick a equals 1, I, I don't think it's going to work because that's going to give us a negative value. Even 2 is probably going to be too small. I would probably go with 3 or 4 at least. If you use 3, let's just say a is equal to 3. That gives us 9 minus 4 squared, which is 16, plus a 3. That would not work. Okay, so a equals 3 does not work. Let's go ahead and try a equals 4 maybe. 4 squared minus 12 divided by 4 is 3. That's going to be 9 plus a 4. 
20 minus 9 is 11. Yes, you got a solution. Houston, we have a solution. Awesome. So A equals 4 works. Nice. It could have taken longer, and you know, but it didn't, hopefully. So A equals 4 is a solution, and since their product is 12, if A is 4, then B is going to be 3. If A is 4, B is going to be a 3. But you also need to check, because what if um, negative 4 also works, right? There's a chance that negative 4 will also work. I, I doubt it. I don't think it's going to work, but there's a chance that it'll work in this case. So that's one way to approach it. Another way to approach it is you could isolate A and replace it with 12 over B. I'm not sure if it's going to be any better, but that's another way to do it. And uh, yet another method, like a third method maybe, you can isolate B squared and write it as A squared plus A minus 11. And of course, um, you have AB equals 12, so you can go ahead and maybe square both sides. I think it'll turn out to be the same. And then kind of replace B squared with this. Uh, that doesn't look very good to me. It's probably going to be something similar. Or maybe you can use the squared, but it's going to be this. Anyway, no matter what you do, you're going to end up with something cortic, and you got to resolve it, right? But we were able to do it, at least found one solution. But find out if there's any other solutions. But this brings us to the end of this video. So Z equals A plus BI. So 4 plus 3I actually satisfies this equation. And you can actually test it out, plug it into the original equation, and see if it checks. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.